Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between FC Barcelona and Valencia. And in this game, Barcelona has won against Valencia 3-1 at the Camp Nou. This was a great game overall, I would say. There were some defects throughout the match, which we are going to be talking about throughout this video. But let's first talk about the lineup. And then later in the video, we're also going to be talking about the first half and the second half. But before we go into that topic, I do want to talk about the OneFootball app. The OneFootball app is considered as the best football app you could find within the App Store. When it does come to the latest player news, team stats, player stats, any tournament that you do want to follow. It is all compact within the OneFootball app. And for those of you guys who are in the UK, you guys would also be able to see La Liga highlights if you guys are following either FC Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Valencia, Real Sociedad. If you guys are in the UK, you would be able to see those teams' highlights. And again, all of this is going to be compact within the OneFootball app. The link is going to be down in the description box down below. By clicking that link, you guys would also be able to support this YouTube channel. Channel. But now let's get back into the video. But the lineup, right? We started with Ansu Fati, Gavi, Jordi Alba, Dest, and we had Sergio Roberto also starting within the starting 11. And the moment we saw Sergio Roberto starting, many were questioning okay, what is going to be the formation? Because we have two right backs that are starting within the starting 11. Like, are we going to be playing in a 3 5 2 and a 5 3 2? Is it going to be a 4 3 3, a 4 2 3 1? What's it going to be? But as soon as the first half did start, we found out that Ronald Koeman has placed these players in a 4 3 three system with Sergio Roberto playing as the right back and Des actually playing as an attacking right winger in Dembele's position and I believe that the reason why Kumin has placed Des in this position to be alongside Ansu Fati and Memphis Depay it is because Kumin did see that match between USA and Costa Rica a match where Serginho Dest was playing basically as a right winger and he saw how special Dest was in the attack Dest has shown that when he is inverted when he comes out wide and goes into the center he can be very lethal and Ronald Kumin wanted to see some of that action. So the attack and the front three, which was a 4-3-3 system, that front three was Memphis Depay in the center, Ansu Fati on the left, and Serginho Dest as the right winger. It was a very interesting starting 11. So going into the first half, after seeing that there were 47,317 fans within the Cap Nou that have attended to watch this game, Barcelona have actually conceded an early goal within the game on the fifth minute with a goal coming from Gaia. Gaia took a long shot, and as that shot was going in, there was not a single defender that was able to block the that shot and not even Ter Stehen knew where that ball was going to go because of how crowded the box was when Gaia actually took that shot from outside the box. He had no idea where it was going. So it was a very tough call for us to say, okay, who can we put the blame on this? Why was Gaia able to take a shot from outside the box and lead towards a goal? And I remember at that moment when Gaia scored that goal and he made that golazo at the Cal New, many of us were saying, okay, is it going to be one of those games? Are we going to be witnessing one of those games where Barcelona actually lose at the Cal New? Many of us were worried. Like, are we actually going to show that this Barcelona squad under Ronald Koeman was not going to learn from what we saw before the international break? But then shortly right after, we actually saw Barcelona working with the ball, which really did amaze many fans. We, we were moving the ball very fast. There was always an open player in order to pass it to. All of the players were working together and very closely in order to play as a collective. And every time we tried to make a fast final pass within the final third area, it was very quick. Like, we played very fast. And I love that. I love that coming from Ronald Koeman's Barcelona. And at that time, knowing that Barcelona were playing in this way, even though we were losing 1-0 within the fifth minute, I was saying that if we continue with this momentum, Barcelona is going to come out winning in the end. It did not matter if we conceded an early goal. Barcelona was going to win because Barcelona looks superior in every area of the pitch. So we saw Serginho Des do exactly what he has done with the USA national team. He was cutting in and then he was looking for a shot. And because he was playing that high up the pitch, because he was placed as a right winger, I had no problem with him playing that high within Valencia's own half. And as the game continued to progress, we saw that Serginho Dest was acting like a distraction for Valencia to show that, look, pay attention towards me. I have the ball because what that ended up doing was that Barcelona had Jordi Alba, Ansu Fati, Memphis Depay waiting on the other side, which was a brilliant move. And so Dest really did have a great game and also want to give props towards Ronald Koeman because this is not a coincidence. When you place these players in their best positions where they should be playing and you give them them the right role, you are going to be getting great results. And then it did not even take long for Barcelona to score their goal within the first half because on the 13th minute, we saw Ansu Fati score the goal for Barcelona, which tied against Valencia 1-1. Ansu Fati received the ball coming from Gavi. Ansu Fati cuts in. He passes it towards Memphis. Memphis Depay passes it back to Ansu Fati. He receives the ball and then he shoots it at the bottom right corner. It was a great goal. You saw and everyone did see just how good of an instinct Ansu Fati has for goal. The way 
that Ansu Fati has worked that play and the way that he scored, it's almost as if he never left. It's almost as if he was never away for nine to ten months. And something very similar did happen with Ansu Fati back in 2015. Like he came back a year later after being injured and played with the older kids and put out a very dominant performance. He did this back in Juvenal A and before that. And so to see Ansu Fati do this at the Cap Nou with the first team, this is nothing new. Ansu Fati is just simply meant to be the star of the team. He is someone that wants to bring results, someone that brings the correct attitude in the attack. And I love that. So it was a very Barza-like goal. And if it wasn't for the intelligence coming between Memphis Depay and Ansu Fati, this goal would have never happened. But that was a moment, ladies and gentlemen, where many were saying, yes, we could count on a player like Ansu Fati. And then moving forward towards the last 15 to 20 minutes of the first half, one of the greatest things that we have also seen in that left side of Barcelona's attack was the attack coming from Gavi, Ansu Fati, Memphis, and Jordi Alba. Because of those four players, they were able to create many triangles within the final third, which allowed Barcelona to play the ball, pass the ball, move around, give Valencia the headaches. And the main players that were leading the plays alongside Gavi and Alba, it was again Ansu Fati and Memphis Depay. But I just love the fact that Barcelona as a collective, they were performing, everybody was involved. And Frankie de Jong also greatly benefited from how Barcelona was playing because Sometimes, even if Ansu Fati could not find the ball or progress the ball, even if Memphis Depay could not find the ball or progress the ball, Frankie de Jong was that player to progress the ball moving forward and bring that ball as high up the pitch as much as possible. It did not matter if he were to get taken down or lose the ball. The whole point was for Frankie to have the ball in Valencia's own half in order for Memphis and Ansu to create some danger. And that is why Frankie de Jong was also having a great game within the first half. And again, this is not a coincidence, my friends. If you place all of the players in in their right positions, in the correct positions, in areas where they could be dangerous, you are going to be getting results. And we have been asking this from Kuman for almost nine months. So the players were in the correct position and the approach was 100%. And then later in those last five minutes of the first half, we saw Ansu Fati win a penalty inside the box, which Memphis Depay did score, which was no problem for him. Like he literally just rocketed that ball into the net. And then that allowed Memphis Depay to receive one goal and one assist within this game. It was a great world-class display coming from Barcelona in the first half. Now going into the second half, this is where things are going to be changing in a different direction, right? Because in the second half, Barcelona actually approached Valencia very differently. I have no idea why. Because within those first 10 to 15 minutes of the second half, Valencia had the ball. It was not Barcelona. Valencia maintained the ball. And the one thing that we were seeing was Barcelona sitting back in a 5-3-2 system. And the only players that were pressing the Valencia players when they were trying to score a goal, it was only Ansu Fati Memphis Depay and many of us were asking wait what is going on why are why are we not doing what we did in the first half and bring that energy into the second half like Barcelona were just waiting for Valencia to lose the ball and Valencia rarely lost the ball which led towards Valencia almost seeing one to two goals within the first 15 minutes of the second half so it was just no time to relax it was a time for Barcelona to wake up because we couldn't get comfortable with winning 2-1 and having a 2-1 lead going into the second half because we know how dangerous Valencia could be and of course when Barcelona come with this attitude and approach you, you are going to be seeing some defects. Like, for example, Busquets, he was tortured. Many players in the midfield of Valencia's were going past Busquets like if he was not even there. Gerard Piquet has so much trouble man-marking one of the players for Valencia. And again, it almost led towards chances on Valencia scoring goals. But just notice the massive difference and how much of a difference it really does make when Barcelona do not want to be on top of the ball. Like, Busquets and Gerard Piquet were a much different player in the second half if you were to compare them to the first half. And then going into the 59th minute, we saw Ansu Fati come out the match, which was understandable because we want to take this progression of Ansu Fati's fitness very slowly. We want Ansu Fati to get into the rhythm very slowly because we do not want to risk anything. He just he just came back from 10 months of injury and we do not want to put Ansu Fati on the field for a full 90 minutes in every game. So it is completely understandable. I really do get it. And then Coutinho came in for Ansu Fati and then it actually took Barcelona up until the 70th minute until we actually saw Barcelona catch their rhythm again. But even though Barcelona were creating even though Barcelona were trying to progress their attack, their defense, their movement on the ball, the attacking threat, I would say, really did drop a level, like a whole level, maybe even two levels. And I think that the main reason why Barcelona's attack dropped, it is because of the substitution of Ansu Fati. Because Ansu Fati left the match, Barcelona's attack did not look as lethal as it once was. And I think that that moment really did show just how big Ansu Fati's presence actually is, how important Ansu actually is for Barcelona. So as Barcelona continued, continue to maintain their 2-1 lead. Going into the 85th minute, we finally saw a goal that Barcelona did deserve because Barcelona deserved to seal this match away and come out with three points. And the 
player that did score the third goal for Barcelona, it was Felipe Coutinho. Yes, my friends, Felipe Coutinho has finally scored for Barcelona. We have been waiting for this moment for so long because we want Coutinho to do well in Barcelona. He has had such a tough time and has experienced a very tough road with this football club. And to finally see Coutinho score this goal for this club and helped Barcelona seal this win, it was a great feeling. But I'm not going to be even ignoring the one player that actually made this goal because it was Serginho Dest. Serginho Dest did hustle for the ball. He dribbled past two players. He found Coutinho. And the only thing that Coutinho had to do was tap it in because Dest did 99% of that work. So I do want to shout out Serginho Dest for having such a great game in this match against Valencia. Serginho Dest really did show that he is improving. He had a slow start in those first two to four weeks, but Serginho Dest has really been picking it up. And I'm very glad to see that he has improved his level. And then later in the match, we saw Sergio Aguero debut for Barcelona finally because he was in the squad list. He did receive the green light early in the morning in Spain, which was a huge boost for Barcelona's attack. Now, he did not receive a lot of minutes. He played about five to six minutes against Valencia, and he could have scored a goal maybe around the 89th minute or the 90th minute, but it just wasn't meant to be. I do think that Aguero eventually will score his first goal for Barcelona very, very soon. But unfortunately, he did not have enough minutes in order for him to do the correct damage. Now, that is going to be the final conclusion for this match of Barcelona and Valencia. It was a great game overall. There were some defects. I think that in the second half, Ronald Koeman took it very easy, which is not the way for Barcelona to move forward. I think that this is something to learn because our next game is going to be against Dinamo Kiev at the Camp Nou on Wednesday. And I think that in that game, Barcelona need to be having what they showed in the first half throughout the full 90 minutes in order for them to get the best result possible. But that is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona post-match review. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.